Hey guys, Matthew, and welcome to part two of my preparing to get rich in the upcoming 3.15 Expedition League. So what we're going to be looking at is essentially the patch notes from an economy standpoint. There's a lot to talk about, so feel free to use the timestamps uh, below uh, because this might be a pretty long video as there has been a lot of changes and a lot of changes typically means uh, that a lot of things need to be said and a lot of things need to be explained. So let's get right into the thick of it. All right, let's talk about the potential for flask crafting of instilling an ink Link orbs. So flash crafting has always been very, very good, but in recent leagues, it's dropped in value a lot uh, with the price of alterations just going way up uh, in price, right? So, for example, I used to craft Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline, and then whenever I would get Alchemists on them, I would sell them for a pretty big profit in, in a League Start scenario. And then afterwards, when Enduring Flasks came out, because those came out, like, what, two years ago or something, I started crafting Enduring Flasks of a Warding. So I would basically alt spam for Enduring and then Beast Craft for Warding. And you could sell these Flasks for, like, 20 Chaos. Meanwhile, they were costing you maybe 5 or 7, 8 Chaos to make. So you were doubling up to nearly tripling your money on these flasks. It was really, really good. Again, though, as price of alteration has been skyrocketing in recent leagues, uh, that's been less and less good. But now with the addition of instilling and inkindling orbs, there is a lot of potential. That being said, before we really make anything out of this, which is why I wrote potential, we need to see the weighting, right? The potential, uh, sorry, the, the outcome percentages of different outcomes. And then we need to see which one of these outcomes are actually good and which ones people actually care about. Uh, but I think that it's going to be a very good idea to pay attention to these orbs and the flasks that people are crafting with them, right? Which ones are actually in demand because I think that there's a lot of potential to make money there. Okay, next thing is that there, there's there been a lot of nerfs this league, right? Melee got nerfed and buffed, but nerfed at the same time. Uh, Spellcasters got Omega nerfed. Miners got nerfed heavily. Um uh there's uh, uh, sorry the mana ascendancy got nerfed uh, heavily right archmage uh any sort of trigger spells i cast on crit and whatnot got nerfed pretty heavily so what's remaining there's basically three archetypes that are remaining at the top of the food chain i think in the lesser nerfed category minions minions got nerfed but not that bad uh bow builds right any any sort of bow uh, archetype didn't get nerfed too too bad um uh, and that includes different types of bow builds like not necessarily just elemental but it could be also like um toxic rain right damage over time but it could it could be elemental it could be physical it could be deck stacking all of that is still on the table and then the final is uh the final archetype that i don't think was touched too much is obviously traps now if you look at these three different archetypes minion doesn't have a whole lot of i guess you could say medium tier items right their medium tier items is typically very simple uh life res chaos res uh, kind of thing, right? Nothing special there. And they have very, very high-end items, which are typically not something that you'll want to craft too, too early. If you look at the trap archetype, it's mostly going to be unique items, and then the rest of the rares is just going to be life and res. So again, nothing really, no potential for crafting. But if we look at the archetype of bows, now I wrote uh, elemental bows, but it's just, I already said that, right? It's not just elemental. If we look at the archetype of bows, there's actually a ton of crafting potential. You can craft plus three bows for things like Toxic Crane or Caustic Arrow, but you could also craft things like deck stacking bows. You could craft things like uh, elemental bows. I think elemental hit is going to be very good in the high end uh, because it's one of the builds that didn't really get hit at all by any real nerfs, and it was at the top of the food chain in terms of uh, damage on the PoE Ninja charts, and anything that's at the top of that uh, chart is always going to be very popular on the high-end spectrum, uh, because a lot of the very, very rich players... Um, who are not necessarily super knowledgeable about the game, if you if you get what I'm getting to here, uh, they just go on PoE Ninja, they look at whatever build is doing the maximum damage, and they try to copy-paste it. So if you're one of these people who's able to craft these things that people are trying to buy that are copy-pasted from other people at the top of the leaderboards in terms of damage, you have a significant advantage. So pay attention to that. Remember that. Okay, next, Awakened Gems got nerfed pretty heavily. So that does two things. First thing it does is that it nerfs basically Cyrus farming. So if your strategy was revolving around speed farming Cyrus, it's probably a good idea to rethink it through. Now, of course, most of the time, this is a byproduct of a second strategy. For example, if you're farming Harvest, right, your speed clearing maps, whatever, uh, you are trying to just get as many maps per hour as possible, Cyrus is going to be a byproduct of that, and that's completely fine. 
Uh, but Cyrus, I'm expecting, is going to be a lot less profitable than before because a lot of the Awakened Gems got nerfed to the point where it's really questionable if you even want to use them considering the ridiculous amount of XP required to make these gems even better than regular ones. Uh, especially now with the nerfs to almost all of the speed-related uh, quality, so like attack speed, cast speed, and all that, right? So not looking too good for the Sires, but that has another effect and that is technically boosting or I should say buffing alternate quality gems um, because if they're nerfing woke gems to the point where people don't really want to use them anymore and they want to use something that's better than the regular gems, alternate quality has always been basically the uh, lower end option, right? The woke gems was like the super expensive option and then most of the time the alternate quality was like below that So you had the super rich then you had the people who are just trying to increase their damage and, and uh, you know their character uh, So by nerfing Awakened gems pretty heavily technically alternate quality gems have been buffed and by a decent margin So I would say it's a very good idea to pay attention to alternate quality gems uh, Blueprints, right? You want to probably uh, farm a lot of those if you're somebody who actually enjoys farming heist which I think heist is going to be good now because of the change right they actually made a heist locker and not only did they make a heist locker they made it work with affinity tabs what that means is that a lot of the contracts that people were just not picking up right they didn't put on their filter or people are now actually going to pick all of them up because they can just automatically throw them in their heist locker and sell them in bulk so that's good if you're trying to sell the contracts because of course you know it's less annoying to deal with it but that's amazing for the people who are buying these contracts because that means the supply should be higher right which means well, prices should stay relatively the same, even without heist on the map device. Uh, and of course, people like, you know, farming contracts in Lyra Arthane, I do think that this is going to be very good. So heist farmers, you're probably going to make a lot of money and focus on those alternate quality gems. Okay, next I need to talk about is Soul Rest. So Soul Rest, the minion staff, right, is looking very popular in this league start. Uh, there's a lot of content creators, Grimro, for example, Asmodeus, I believe, both made videos about Soul Rest and the, uh, the minion build alongside it because it barely got nerfed by, they basically got nerfed by one support gem, which is not that big of a deal on a, on a build like that. Uh, so what that means is that Alone of the Darkness, this is a divination card that gives you a random delve unique, is probably going to be a very good idea to consider because I think Soul Rest is going to be pricey. Now, Soul Rest, um... I believe is has been added to the core drop pool or something it drops everywhere now uh so what that means is that obviously it's more common than before but i do still think that alone of the darkness is going to be a good flip because it also gives you primordial chain uh now that being said primordial chain or at least the golem ascendancy right golem mentalists got nerfed pretty heavily i don't think golems are going to be very popular in the league start especially uh due to the changes and pretty drastic changes right losing element immunity uh losing um damage per golem like there was a lot of nerfs that happened in in there that makes it so stacking golem is is nowhere near as good as it used to be so the value of primordial chain seems like it went to soul rest and then the value of soul rest changed with primordial chain if you will uh so it's definitely something to keep in mind right a lot of these ideas that I'm giving you here in this video are exactly that. They're, they're assumptions and ideas to keep in mind. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be good. I could be completely wrong. All right, potentially, avoid ailments is going to be very popular because a lot of ascendancies are just losing them. Now, of course, this is more so a hardcore thing, but I do think even in softcore, a lot of people like to get ailment immune uh, because they don't have to worry about a freeze flask, a dowsing flask, a shocking flask, and whatnot, right? Uh, but it got changed from gloves and helmets to boots and shields. Now it was already on boots as a um, as a what's it called uh, an influence modifier from the shaper influence. But now it seems like it's going to be a regular mod that you can both craft and unveil. Uh, so what that allows us to do is that it was impossible to get boots with Tailwind, Elusive, and Avoid Elemental Elements. But now if we can craft uh, Elemental Elements on boots or unveil it, that does open up this, the potential for Elemental Elements immunity on boots alongside Tailwind and Elusive or Onslaught or anything else that is not from Shaper, uh, which I think is a pretty big buff to boots crafting. Definitely something you'll want to pay attention to uh, if you're trying to craft is uh, if trying to cram avoid elements on everything that you can possibly do it on uh so yeah that's a pretty good idea same thing on shields a lot of shields though uh 
that was never too big of a deal but the thing about shields is that two of the biggest suffixes that people typically care about are recover energy shield on kill or life on kill and then socketed gems have their reduced mana cost right or reduced mana reservation i should say right well now the third suffix instead of going with let's say intelligence or strength and quality right something in quality that further increased the amount of energy shield but didn't really do anything else now you can actually consider doing avoid elements on a shield which i think is actually a pretty big buff to shield crafting especially paired with harvest reforgers so something to keep in mind as well probably not so much in the very very uh start of the league though this is maybe a little bit later on when people start to have money because we're talking about fairly expensive crafts here okay i think leveling gems is going to be absolutely amazing amounts of currency i think that leveling gems is going to be one of the best ways to make money in the game and i'm not even exaggerating what that means is that five-way emblem farming is going to be huge if you can do it, right? Thing is, of course, with the damage nerfs and survivability nerfs and mana nerfs, it's going to be a lot harder, right? Less builds are going to be able to do it, but that was already the case ever since they got rid of self-cursing ascendancy, right? So, or archetype. So what that means is that you're going to need a support. But if you're somebody who plans to play with a duo and you plan to play a build like Penance Brand or uh, some sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of build that scales really well with a, a support this is going to be an extremely good way to make money not only that uh, now five ways are a good idea uh, breach farming is also a good idea if you want to do breach rotations because you can sell the slots for the rotations to make the breach basically free for yourself and you get all the loot and of course you get the gem xp which is pretty nice uh, but another thing is simulacrum simulacrums are insanely good for gem xp and the advantage of simulacrum versus something like breach and five ways is that five ways is basically going to require support it's nearly impossible to farm five way emblems um i guess you could say efficiently by yourself you need a support and breach farming is something that you need to sell the actual slots in order to make money simulacrums you can do that completely by yourself right which is really really good and it is insane simulacrums by themselves should get paid off just with the xp that you're getting from the gems because that was already the case when end lightning and powers are nerfed now they're going to be insanely insanely in demand uh reason for that mana nerfs right mana nerfs were huge that means that pretty much every single build ever is going to need an enlighten now right uh, if you want to be able to fit two hours in your build you're basically going to need an enlighten there's not going to be any uh any other thing and or any other options really and then the reason why empower got buffed so heavily is because they nerfed support gems right so when they nerfed support gems they nerfed the damage multipliers on the actual uh base gem itself right so the way that damage works in this game is you have your base damage which is on your gem and then that gets basically increased by all your increases right so let's say you have like i don't know a thousand percent increase that's 10 times the damage uh and then it gets multiplied by your multiplicatives so if let's say you have 500 percent more damage that can gets multiplied by five right so that's how you end up with damage that are in the millions and millions and even sometimes hundreds of millions now what they did is they took a lot of these multipliers on every skill gem by about 20 percent per skill gem and they just removed it right no more no more no more no more so what happens is that your base gem stayed the same they didn't really touch the actual base gems themselves i mean some of them they did especially the melee stuff uh they pretty much all got a buff of about 20 percent more um but most of the gems especially for spellcasters for example were left mostly untouched so the base damage that you're dealing doesn't change but the multiplicatives the way that the gem was multiplied at the end of uh, of its uh uh of the of the math right of the calculation it gets multiplied by a much smaller number so in power what it does is that it takes this base damage and it rises it up a lot especially on spells not something that you see typically on attacks but for spells it's huge because of the way that the damage works with spells uh so what that happens is that your initial number becomes big much bigger and then when it's multiplied even if the multiplications are smaller it kind of goes back to how good it was before or not necessarily as good but i think empower is going to be uh, on a lot of builds uh, a lot of builds are going to use empower uh, and a lot of popular builds toxic rain loves empower especially with the upcoming nerfs essence rain loves empower right especially damage over time builds because they have less options when it comes to support gems and a lot of their support gems actually got nerfed uh so yeah tldr gem leveling is going to be absolutely massive okay so uh, what you can do, a little bit of a tips and trick, is you can actually open two clients of Path of Exile without breaching any terms of uh, condition or anything like that. So you could have your main account, right? And let's say you have a duo with a support. 
uh, and you're going to farm five ways. You can have you and your duo, who's a support, and you're the carry. And now what you can do is each of you is get one account to just AFK in, in a safe spot, right? Uh, so one of you each, and then you have two more spots that you can just sell to other people for XP. And what you can do is you can fill these alts up with like 32, I think, gems. And you can have these alt accounts leveling 32 gems at a time while you guys are basically clearing and leveling gems in your offhands yourselves. So you can you can level about 40 gems each, uh, which is absolutely insane amount of money on top of the fact that you're getting all the loot at the end and you're selling spots for additional XP. It's basically no a no-brainer. Um, so yeah, really, really good idea to do that as a little bit of a tip. Okay, div cards for Enlightened Empowers are going to be very solid to flip. I'm taking about the Dragon and the Enlightened or whatever it's called, right? No, that's not it. There's another name for it. Uh, because uh, Delete Mechanics can no longer drop Empowers or Enlighteners or Enhances that are higher than level 1. So there was a lot of Lee Mechanics that were dropping Enlightened Empowers level 2, level 3, even sometimes level 4. That's gone, right? Only level 1s. So what that means is that these Divination cards that give you instant level 3 or level 4s are going to be very, very solid flips. Uh, no more level 21, 23 gems are going to drop outside of the uh, gem corruption in the temple. So what that means is that in the end game, I think the gem corruption rooms are actually going to sell for a lot of currency, maybe 1x, maybe even more. Uh, because people who really want to min-max their, their builds now are going to have no other option than to just double corrupt the gems. Because 21, 23 gems outside of div cards will no longer exist. Catalyst changes should mean much cheaper catalyst, which is basically a nerf to Metamorph, which is why I personally don't think that Metamorph on the map device is super worth it, especially at 5 chaos. Uh, and the reason for that is because, well, cheaper crafting and a lot less catalysts used, right? I already mentioned that in the last video, in the in the first part of the video uh, of this video, where I said you won't need to use catalysts anymore, right? Because they're never going to be consumed. What that means is that your your crafting is going to be cheaper, but it also means more RNG because you won't be able to, for example, slam an item with Fertile Catalyst in order to try to increase your odds of getting life on the item. Stuff like that. So it's a bit of a nerf to crafting, but it does mean cheaper crafting overall. Uh, and it does mean that bulk crafting is heavily buffed, right? If there's somebody who likes to do bulk crafting of things like belts, rings, amulets, you are getting a pretty massive buff from this because you're no longer going to need to con con uh, constantly recatalyze your items if you're crafting like tens and t uh, tens or even hundreds of items, which is what bulk crafting is all about. Okay, Veil Mods are no longer a crafted mod, which means uh, no remove crafted mod potential, right? So if you had an item, let's say, and it had an open prefix and open suffix, and you unveiled it, and you got an, uh, an unveiled suffix, and you wanted a prefix, you could just remove crafted mod and try again. This is no longer going to be the case. Once you unveil an item, whatever you get is whatever you get. What that means, however, is that you should be able to craft or blocks, and of course, metamoths, uh, metamods, like prefix cannot be changed and suffix cannot be changed. What that means in the grand scheme of crafting is that crafting just got a lot more expensive because the way that you were crafting before is that you would get an item with, say, three prefix or three suffixes, right? End game item. And then you would uh, you would actually uh, craft on prefix not be changed or suffix not be changed. And then you would reforge with harvest with whatever you wanted. So like cold dot multiplier, for example, you would reroll cold until you got the tier that you wanted. And then you would unveil for the fifth modifier and craft the sixth modifier from the bench. And you would technically have a perfect item, right? Now, no, it doesn't work like that anymore. Because what you'll have to do is technically it's the entire same sequence. You start with an item with either three prefix or three suffix. You craft on prefixes or suffixes cannot be changed and then you use harvest to get the fourth mod now the difference here is that you're going to need to basically craft on your prefix or suffix cannot be changed before you unveil again this is an extra two exalt but it doesn't stop there because it's going to remove a mod before adding a new one so the reason why we're blocking let's say we have three suffixes right and then one prefix and then we craft on prefixes cannot be changed or sorry suffixes cannot be changed which is the prefix is that we're keeping our three suffixes which is the most important part safe but then it's going to remove one of the two mods it could either remove the craft that we just added which is suffixes cannot be changed which this is the good option this is the 50 percent win rate and then this the 50 percent of basically uh losing all of your progress up to the harvest point is that it removes whatever you just harvest crafted if it removes whatever you just harvest crafted, basically you just got to go again, right? Reforge again with harvest until you get whatever you wanted again, and then craft it on again. The suffix cannot be changed, right? For your three suffixes, and then refor uh, and then unveil again. Now the disadvantage 
is that if you unveil something bad, well, you got to go back to reforging with Harvest until you get the mod again, and then you take another 50-50. So the meta of crafting perfect items, five stat items with a crafted mod, which has been basically mirror tier items for, for a while now, uh, got basically an additional layer of RNG involved, which means much more expensive. Okay, so that's basically what we're looking at in terms of Ashling, which was what I had written over there. Uh, so yeah, overall, it does mean that you're going to need more currency to craft good items in general. Okay, Onslaught Unveil should be really big money. The reason for that is that most builds in the past would get Onslaught from either running a Cinder Swallow Flask. Now, don't get me wrong, Cinder Swallow is still good. Uh, it's still one of the better Flask, I would say, probably the second best in the game. Uh, but a lot of builds outside of running Cinder Swallow would get an Abyss Jewel with gain onslaught on kill like seven percent or whatever they would slap on the, that on their build and they're like okay i got onslaught now well that's gone so what that means is that you will want onslaught elsewhere and the best place to get it is on your boots right onslaught on kill especially if you get the elevated onslaught from redeemer because it gives you cast speed attack speed and move speed while you have an onslaught so not only you're you're getting onslaught on kill you're getting buffed while you have this onslaught and uh, this is also useful even for something like a raider class because they have permanent onslaught which means they have the permanent increased cast speed attack speed and move speed which is a huge deal so i think that um onslaught and especially elevated onslaught on boots is going to be fantastic crafting something to keep in mind uh which is what i just wrote here okay spell slinger and cast on crit seem to be basically dead uh the only reason the only way to really make spell slinger or cast on crit work is by either dropping some support gems in order to have more mana or dropping some auras in both cases you're going to be well in cast on crit case you're just losing damage if you drop an aura right let's say you were using hatred and you have to drop it okay whatever spell slinger however was what was actually allowing you uh like reserving your mana was is what will allow was allowing you to play spell slinger in the first place so that costing mana typically most spell slinger builds would only have a very small pool of unreserved mana for their movement ability because their spell slinger itself wouldn't really cost anything now let's say you're slinging four spells and let's say most of them cost anywhere between 30 and 40 mana on on, on average well that's 120 mana that you need to have it available every single time that you're slinging these and typically you're using something like frenzy right something very fast to attack which basically means this ascendancy, or sorry, this archetype of spell slinger is just dead in the water. As for cast on crit, you can still make it work if you have enough mana to sustain the cost of cast on crit. Um, but it's going to be very hard and very expensive in most cases. Okay, dot multi is now a suffix. This is a pretty big change for a few reasons. Uh, bows got nerfed pretty hard in the very, very end game because there's no, uh, there's no place for the fourth good suffix now right so if we think about a perfect bow for something like toxic rain or even for something uh like uh elemental uh well not necessarily elemental builds actually it would have to be damage over time builds uh or even bleed i guess actually so if we if we think of a bow for toxic rain that got nerfed pretty heavily because the three prefixes that you care about were plus one socket of gems plus two support and then your chaos dot and your suffixes were plus two arrows attack speed and damage over time multiplier that would be a perfect bow. Now you need to you need to choose three of those four suffixes, and there's no real good third prefix to replace the lack of chaos damage over time multiplier. Now there are some mods, but most of them are uh, influenced, which means you can't work with a fractured bow anymore. Which basically is a pretty big nerf to end game crafting damage over time bows for the chaos ascendancy. However, it's actually a buff to bleed bow crafting because now you can actually have a perfect triple prefix for physical on a bleed bow and allow you to go over something like um, attack speed, damage over time multiplier, and physical damage over time multiplier, or more damage with bleeding or whatever, right, as suffixes. So it's actually a buff to bleed while it's a nerf to, uh, to chaos prefix it or chaos damage over time bows uh so it's a bit interesting it does mean that the meta for crafting bows is going to have to change a little bit um because of the way that people were doing it we're mostly just fracturing a perfect suffix like plus two arrows which was the hardest thing to get and then mostly like essence spamming for example with attack speed until you get damage over time multiplier and then you could easily work on the prefixes all you had to do was slam or, or beast craft until you get plus one unveil for for uh damage over time multiplier craft plus two and boom right you had a literally a perfect bow uh for fairly easy 
now that's going to be a, a lot harder because you'll have to go with influence which means you can't use fractured or you'll just have to give up a third prefix which is overall a pretty big nerf okay or giving up plus two arrows that's also a pretty big nerf all right Accuracy, uh, accuracy stacking ballistas are basically completely dead uh, because they are removing the 30% accuracy if you haven't killed recently from uh, Abyss Jewels and that's basically what the, th that archetype was stacking, right? They were stacking a ton of accuracy if you haven't killed because if you're using ballistas, you have never killed. It's your ballistas that are killing. That is a pretty big nerf to Replica Shroud of the Lightless, which was one of the uh, most expensive chase uniques in the entire game. Uh, because first off, it's extremely rare, but second off, that's really one of the only builds that was actually using Replica Shroud of Lightless outside of, uh, I guess, Tornado Shot, Jugs, Accuracy Stacking in, in, in uh, as well, but not Ballistas. Um, so I think that Replica Shroud of Lightless should be a lot cheaper now, as uh, the one main archetype that was using them got nerfed pretty heavily. 60, over 66%, I believe, of people using Shroud of Lightless on the ladder were playing Accuracy Stacking Ballistas. So, yeah. Uh, that kind of sucks, because it was one of the most uh, chase items from people who were, uh, who were farming alter or Replica Uniques from Heist. So that's actually a further nerfing of Replica Heist Unique Blueprints compared to the buff that I was talking about earlier from the alternate quality gems. Alright, anything base grit is going to be absolutely huge because Diamond Flask is garbage. Okay, so think about Hunter or Shaper or um, what's the other one? Is it Redeemer or something? I can't work. No, Elder. Elder, Shaper, and Hunter for the spell grit and the attack grit are all going to be huge. Uh, so that means that, you know, use your, if you're doing harvest, use your crit reforges for chest pieces. There's going to be an insane amount of demand for that. It also means that hatred base crit watcher's eyes, the base crit while affected by hatred, I think it goes up to 2% or whatever, is probably going to be the single most expensive stat in the game. Probably going to outdo even plus 2 impale, probably going to outdo even damage over time malevolence. It is going to be absolute gold mine which does mean that this is a pretty substantial buff to uh farming elder or uber elder because a single stat i'm expecting this to be anywhere between 10 and 20x i know that this is a pretty big range uh but it does depend on how many people are using hatred in their builds but typically hatred is the best aura because it double dips on the physical as extra cold and on the more cold damage so that's why uh that's typically the best aura in the game all right, 100% crit, if you haven't crit recently, is going to be incredibly, incredibly good. And this is a uh, this is a uber enchant for boots, right? So if you are if you see this enchant, 100% crit, if you haven't crit recently, uh, this basically always applies to miners and trappers and any builds that basically aren't the ones hitting themselves, right? That that care about crit, which is mostly typically miners and trappers. Uh, so look at the boots that these archetypes are using, which is typically going to be things like Azir's Steps or Sintrex for people going low life and whatnot and if you see this enchant in your uber lab runs then go ahead and uh, put those on boots because they are going to be money uh, because lack of crit is going to be a big problem this league and if people don't want to go with the increased crit strike gems which really just adds you critical strike chance to your build right it doesn't multiply your damage in any way uh, this is like 100% crit is basically more than you're getting from a diamond flask, right? And this is just an enchant on your boots. So this enchant is really, really strong. I'm actually surprised they didn't nerf it, but I guess it's because not many builds can use it. All right, lab running popular boots for miners and trappers. I already, uh, already spoke about that, right? It's your steps, Sintrex, stuff like that. All right, Verity's Veil and Azir Reflection are going to be absolutely massive. Now, the thing is, you can't in any way, shape, or form target Azir's Reflection outside of flipping the Divination card for it or farming Val Temple. If you want to speed farm Val Temple, if they're really cheap, which they tend to be, it's actually not a bad idea because you get the uh, Beauty Through Death Divination card. Now, it's pretty rare, uh, but it's an option. The better option, however, is Verity's Veil because it can be completely targeted through farming Maven. I'm expecting this helmet to be both very, 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 very popular, including for non-totem builds, and I'm, I'm expecting this helmet to be very, very, very expensive. So what that means is that Maven's Ritz should also be pretty expensive, um, especially due to the lack of uh, supply, right? 
I think a lot of people are going to struggle with bossing or even 10 fight invitations and all that, which anything that gives you Maven's Crescent Splinters or and Maven's Ritz, I think a lot of people are going to struggle with those, which means the supply should be lower, which means the price should be higher. That being said, if there's less demand for it because people are not capable of farming them, period, then the price should lower because people are going to want to be selling them and then bossers are going to have a really good time farming Maven. I think Maven is going to be really 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 profitable um now of course again i could be wrong this is just an assumption because it's the only real way to get rid of all curses uh gazi made a video yesterday showcasing that even if you have 100 percent uh decreased curse effectiveness you can still get cursed right on your build uh which sucks but hexproof makes you in, uh, unaffected by curses period so verity's veil and uh Adzir's reflection are the way to go they're absolutely best in slot when it comes to uh getting rid of all the curses in the game uh so if totems are especially if totems i i did say that i think totems are uh i think other builds than totems are going to use that but t th this is typically the helmet of choice for totem builds so especially if freezing pulse ice spear totem is popular which i think it should be because it always is i think that this is going to be an extremely good farming uh thing to farm right in maven all right flasks are going to be a bit weird it's actually a little bit hard to predict the king of flask is still going to be bottled faith however yes it did lose its base crit which is a huge deal but uh think of it this way before you had most other flasks which would give you anywhere between five and eight percent damage or so on your builds right and then you had bottled faith which would give you something like 20 percent damage on your build right so it was still uh, it was a lot better than any other flask, which is what made it the absolute king. Now what happens is that most of these flasks, which were giving you anywhere around 8% damage per flask, give you about 3-4% to damage. Like, Xeria's Promise is literally trash in terms of damage. Wise Oak, garbage, right? They give you very, very little damage. Bottled Faith kept its most important mod, which was uh, monsters take 10% increased damage, right? So that's just 10% more damage period right so that alone right most other builds or uh, most other flasks got nerfed to about three four percent bottle faith kept this ten percent and it also kept the fact that it's a sulfur flask so 40 percent increased damage which is big right most builds will get about yeah three four percent damage from that and not only that it also got the while it did lose its base crit of up to two percent it got basically a uh, one to one and a half diamond flask included on the flask with the 100 to 150 percent increased critical strike chance uh which for most build that's going to be about anywhere between six and ten percent crits which is a huge deal so bottled faith while it used to give you maybe 20 percent damage and most other flasks would give you eight or maybe ten right bottled faith is now going to give you like 15 but most other flasks are going to give you like three or four so that's actually a massive uh buff to bottled faith in contract uh, contrast to other flasks which means the bottle faith is still the absolute king of flasks um so yeah that's really good because that means that feared farming and uh, cortex farming in general should be very good especially because i think a lot of people are just not going to be able to farm uh the feared uh in general due to lack of damage or mana issues and all those different nerfs i think it's going to be uh only people who are actually skilled in the game because no one's going to be able to just face tank it with league starter builds uh so that's good that is quite good and if people are not able to farm things like cortex uber elder and whatnot it does mean that the fragments are typically cheap cortex is going to be cheaper all of these things are really good if you're somebody who's actually capable of farming these bosses capable of farming the feared all right dying sun uh i i'm not sure if i got that correctly but it seems to be that it only lasts for like three seconds and you only get one charge uh so yeah I, I don't know what they did to dying sun but if i understood that correctly dying sun is just completely dead imagine having a flask that lasts for three seconds you only get one charge and all it does is give you plus two projectiles pretty uh yikes to me anyways all right cinder swallow uh cinder swallow is an interesting because it does keep its increased damage on par with bottled faith right the seven to ten percent now it does mean that you need to divine it uh but now it only has one of the three either hp recover mana or es i think the most expensive one is probably going to be mana because i think that's what people are going to struggle with the most um could be wrong about that uh but it does mean that it's a significant nerf because before that you could just use a, a, a cinder swallow it would take care of all your life mana and es issues ever right the recovery is just so strong and you would get the additional damage 
Um, so overall, Cinder Swallow is in a bit of a weird spot, and with the nerf to Ashling Crafting, it does mean I don't think people are going to use Ashling in the League Start scenario, period. I really don't think people are going to be there's going to be any demand for that because it's going to be uh, such a gamble, right? People are going, only going to start using that when they start crafting much bigger items. Uh, so the price should be really low, which means that Farming Betrayal, Katarina in general should probably not be too great especially with the nerf to uh to cinder swallow especially with the damage over time becoming a suffix i feel like um yeah betrayal farming is probably not going to be what it was in 3.14 but again this is just an assumption i could be wrong all right there was a lot of cluster changes a lot of them a lot of nerfs pretty much all nerfs matter of fact but uh, it doesn't really matter i still think that clusters is going to be your best option i mean what else are you going to do grab like travel nodes to get three percent damage on a node on the tree no i still think the clusters is going to be the best uh so i don't think anything's going to change right uh but i do think that it's maybe going to be a little bit more flexible i think people are going to try to cram maybe less clusters in their builds um but honestly there's such little options that are that are anywhere near uh, as good that cluster crafting is still probably going to be very good especially due to lack of harvest right uh, a lot of the clusters from last league were coming from from a harvest being on the map device and people spamming that that's gone right so cluster crafting goes back to either alt spamming you know chaos spamming or uh fossils right anything like that for the most part uh, of course there's still people that are going to be farming harvest but it's going to be a lot harder so supply should go down but demand should go down so technically it should stay pretty relevant uh, in terms of price i don't think it's going to be that much different the the the, the meta ones are going to stay as expensive as they were and of course the non-meta ones are going to drop in price but that's just because of the meta not because of the actual um uh difficulty that it is to craft them uh, that being said the bases should be cheaper right we saw some pretty expensive cluster bases last league because we didn't really have any access to delirium this league however we get delirium on the map uh, on the map device and there should be less demand because of the nerfs that i already mentioned so i think overall uh, i think cluster bases should be cheap so if there's some specific ones that are very expensive say a content creator makes a guide on a specific cluster it might be a good idea to store these bases uh, or to pick up as many as you can and then to craft them into whatever the people actually need and i think that's going to be a pretty viable way of making currency it's always good though Crafter, uh, crafting clusters is always good i think all amulets have uh, lost a lot of their value in recent leagues i think they're going to go back to uh, the top of the the top right a lot of builds are hurting for mana a lot of builds uh, are hurting uh for auras and I'm, an all amulet basically gives you a free aura. And most of the time, it's a 50% one. Thinking of things like hatred, you know, wrath, zealotry, right? Or whatever. Uh, discipline, even. So I think that farming all, even low depth farming all for amulets, is going to be absolutely a lot of currency. So if you're somebody who knows how to farm alls and, he's, and who has a lot of experience with that or who wants to learn it, uh, I think that, yeah, all is going to be huge money. Even better if there is a challenge related to him. Now, I can't predict if there will be one or not, but if there is any sort of challenge in regards to all, uh, on top of his amulets being big money, I think that delving is going to be very, very good. Um, yeah. Uh, Harbinger nerfs, it does mean that the Sextant Nemesis 3 loses value. It's not going to be dead because there's other places that you can use it. With Delirium on the map device, it means that you can use a... I, I mentioned that in the previous video, in the previous part, right? You could use a regular map with Delirium on it and then have Beyond and Nemesis on the map itself, uh, which these are maps that you can totally snipe, by the way. Uh, and then you can use the Nemesis currency or Nemesis 3 Sextant modifier uh on the on the map right as a sextant and you're going to make a ton of currency it's probably going to be fairly similar to the whole king harbinger not quite as good uh but of course the king harbinger was all just like one big pack of monsters this is going to be basically less condensed which also means better performance hopefully um but yeah so king harbinger not looking good they said that they removed a lot of the monsters and they made the monsters harder which is two things that don't go well together at all uh, that being said, I could be wrong. I was wrong about it last league uh, because I didn't know that the 30% was per Harbinger. But uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see the results of people who actually decide to try it out. I, for one, think that it's not going to be a good idea to try to force a Sextant like Nemesis 3. Uh, because it was already kind of hard to sustain, especially as the league went on and the Scarabs and all that became more and more expensive. And bubblegum currency became cheaper and cheaper as more and more people were farming this. Uh, but now it's going to be way worse. 
All right, that being said, Nemesis 3 itself was unchanged, right? So as I mentioned, the later map device plus beyond and Nemesis on the map is going to give you incredible results, I think. Um, all right, Abyss, really good early. Tons of maps, tons of rare items, amazing for map sustain. I already talked about the whole Abyss strategy in the previous video. No need to talk about that. I also mentioned already the Metamorph. Uh, I don't think it's going to be insanely good because of the nerf to the Catalyst, but we do need to remember that Metamorph is really good for things like even Exalt drops and a lot of maps, right? It's really, really good for maps. So depending on the price of red maps, at 5 Chaos on the map device, there's still a chance that it's going to be a pretty good and viable strategy, especially paired with Metamorph Scarabs and Metamorph Atlas Passives. Uh, for example, the ones in um, uh, Valdor's Rest are quite good. Uh, so it really kind of depends on the price of red maps, whether or not Metamorph are going to be good, I think. All right, Ritual and Delirium are going to be king. Already spoken about that in the um, in the previous video. But what that means is that Exalt should be cheap because Chaos should retain a lot of value. Something similar to what we saw in Heist League. Now, of course, there is no Heist, uh, you know, Exalt printing mechanic. So it's not going to be anywhere near as cheap as it was in Heist. But it does mean that Chaos should retain a lot of value. Um, which is both a good and a bad thing. It depends how you look at it, right? If you're somebody who likes stacking exalts, that's good because exalts are cheap. Uh, but typically, it does mean that it's going to be worse uh, for crafters, right? For people who like crafting because you're getting less value uh, from uh, from your exalts when you're buying supplies, right? So let's just say dense fossils are 2C when exalts are 100C and they're 2C when exalts are 60C, you're getting a lot less but, of course, that does typically mean that, that crafts themselves sell for more. So, it all kind of averages out. Uh, it just depends how you look at it. Uh, Ritual Watch Zones, already talked about that. I think that this is going to be one of the better ways to make currency. Of course, Ritual being extremely strong. 13 Chaos for 5 Rituals is uh, just above 2 Chaos per Ritual. And you're getting the uh, additional 2 rerolls from the Hayrick, uh, Hayrick Hamlet passives. Overall, I think Ritual is going to be very good. Which means that uh, Meticulous is going to be very good. This is nice because uh, we know that the passives are not changing. And the ones that are currently in Hayrick Hamlet, the... Um, the watchstones right are, are are very very good money to roll because there's other things that you can roll on them at the same time now you need to actually look at what can roll as well but typically there's going to be uh multiple different uh possibilities i think for example when you're rolling for meticulous you can also be rolling at the same time for any of the harvest stuff if i if i remember correctly so mature bountiful ripe all those uh and they're going to basically be a lot of additional currency uh, I think those those are all at the same time on the same type of watchstones. I could be wrong. All right, Delirium watchstones, uh, not really good. I don't think the Delirium watchstones are too, too great. I've already mentioned. Um, neither are the Alba watchstones. I don't think they're that great. Uh, but sextants are typically what you want to look for uh, more so because sextants are going to be uh, what's going to add a lot of monsters so one thing that you can do and this is a strategy that is a little bit different than your usual you know stacking good watchstones in a region and then pairing up with the passives what you can do instead is stacking good sextant modifiers so you can buy a ton of the best sextant right and then roll sextants until you get really really good stuff things like hunted traders you know the really really good ones breach um legions right you can force really good sextant modifiers uh when you're sextant blocking and then put all of those when uh in in the region that you're farming your delirium plus alva and you're typically going to get more value out of the sextant than you would from the watchstones when it comes to juicing maps um so that's just something to remember keep in mind uh i've already mentioned that in the previous video but Obviously, you're going to be wanting to run very long layouts. Very long and linear is typically the best for Delirium, Tropical Island, Burials, Tower, Promenade, Malformation, stuff like that. Uh, Simulacrum should be cheap because Delirium is on the map device uh, at 16 Chaos, uh, so that should be good. Um, and, uh, of course, I think that it's going to be all about either farming Ritual or Delirium. Those are going to be like the two main endgame strategies and probably what people are going to be doing the most. Unless, of course, the mechanic itself, uh, which I'm not looking forward to too, too much, is like really, really good. Which, again, it might happen, right? Uh, but from what we saw in the video, all I saw was explosion of white items. So I'm not like super hyped for the Lee mechanic itself, but you never know. And, of course, the uh, special thingy, whatever they're called, um that you you go to that's its actual layout right those might be really good i think those are similar to basic contracts and heists so that's interesting um 
it does mean that uh should be strong since it drops fossil and everything is, is amazing xp yeah i already spoke about that earlier in the video right simulacrums are very very good because it drops everything right simulacrums drops literally everything in the game but the main reason is for gem xp as i've talked about in the very beginning of the video gem xp is going to be worth a lot uh, and the advantage of simulacrum farming is that you can do it solo. You don't need a duo. You don't need to be selling any slots. You can just slap on as many gems as you can on your build that you can fit and just focus on leveling those. Uh, Blight mostly left unchanged, honestly, except that it can't drop high level empowers and lightnings or enhances and it can't drop 21, 23 gem. Oils should still be good. I mean, oils are always good, right? People always need those for their gear. And of course, you can three to one them, which is another great thing. Um, you know, you can sell the cheapest oils in the game uh, at like one C each early because people just need them for their anoints. And if you're the, you know, one of the only person who has any of them, it's good. It's also good for farming gem XP, farming character XP. Now, of course, that requires you not to die. But overall, I think blights are going to be pretty solid. We still have the blight scarabs. Lear Arthane was left untouched. Uh, Valdo's Rest was left untouched, so those are going to be great. Uh, I think that this league, the better region for Blight, because we don't have Breach on the map device, or Blight on the map device, or Heist on the map device, I think that Lear Arthane has been pushed out. And because we have Metamorph on the map device, Valdo's Rest has been pulled in. Therefore, I think that for Blight this league, it's going to be all about Valdo's Rest alongside the metamorph uh, passives on the atlas alongside a metamorph scarab and metamorph on the map device so that's it's all about pairing things up as i mentioned in the in, in the previous video so that's going to be that and then one last thing that i want to talk about because trappers are looking to be very very popular is farming the temple of atzuatl for the slave driver's hand um so this is a unique uh, uh a unique that drops only and literally only from the temple of atzuatl and i think it's going to be in crazy high demand because it basically makes it so your traps cost life instead of mana which is the equivalent of using life tap which well if you've been paying attention to all the mana nerfs is going to be a massive problem in the coming league uh so a lot of people are going to need those if they want to be able to just spam traps all day um and if they don't want to go with you know eldritch battery early this is going to be the way to go and they are going to be very expensive uh so farming spe speed farming temple something for example like going into glenic carnes glenic carnes has very very good temple nodes it allows you to speed farm temples and also it allows you to really pick which uh which room you want to be level three because of the passives the double upgrade and of course the changing room without resetting it to level one and, of course, if you're going to Glenic Carnes to farm temples, you can pair that up very, very well with um, uh, farming six links, right? Monster's Treasure, Bountiful Traps, things like that. And the Tamper Proof node, which makes all of these uh, boxes corrupted, that allows you to drop a ton of six links. And uh, with, the, with the nerfs and all that to, to harvest and, and uh, divining with harvest, typically farming divines is always a good thing to do. But you need to get in it. You need to get there before someone makes a video about it, right? There's always somebody who's going to make a video. Oh, how I made an, I had an earned three days farming six links, right? You need to get there before these people and you need to pay uh to, to pay attention to the price of um uh what's it called monstrous treasure also remember that there's a div card for monstrous treasure now whether or not it's worth to buy the div card to try to get the monster treasure yeah probably not uh but overall it's a very good strategy for making currency early because a lot of people need divines right they'll, they'll they'll just throw one or two divines on their gear typically divines go for about 10 to 1 10 to 1 exalt right so you have uh 10 divines for 1x and in in one map you can easily farm 10 divines right if you're doing it right if you're using the proper nodes if you're using the proper watchstones of course right you wanted the the thing that makes it so you have more chance to get six sockets and therefore six links uh and then of course you could also use sextants that give you uh you know monster uh not the monsters are in range but the uh the increased quantity like there's there's a lot of pairings that you can do there i mean there's a bunch of videos about farming six links and how to do it properly so you guys should check those out but i think stacking monsters treasures early on is not a bad idea because they go for very cheap all right this is basically my analysis of the entirety of the patch notes from an economy standpoint oh man this video is long but there is so much stuff uh there there was just so many changes and so many things to talk about uh i think i i think i did all right i think i sped through it as fast as i could hopefully you guys enjoyed as i as i do though before i go i want to say a massive thank you to my supporters jordan fruitfly thomas naroth master tim nake 
Jake Off, Flame Scorpion, Reese, Emma, Road to Millions, Alex Brandon, Don Joseph. Welcome back. Panda, Atticus, Scott, Bard, Grimoire, and Johnny. So is Ronald, Kevin, Mercury, and Bizon, and anybody else who supported me in the past. Anybody else who wishes to remain anonymous. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys tomorrow for League Start. Peace.